Right. You hit me with a beer. Alright, I'm rolling. You're rolling? <sighs> this is... Thank you. But today's about operatic drinking songs. I'm obsessed. Uh, <laughs> like, actually obsessed. I picked some really good ones. We all know um, Libiamo from Verdi's La Traviata. You've heard it in flash mobs around malls or in grocery stores when you're trying to shop or, you know, it's, it's just everywhere. So we can't talk about that one. No, it's great. It's great. It's good for a reason. You know it for a reason. But we're going deeper than that. All right, here we go. Oh, this is... Um, this is a sour ale that I bought from the grocery store in Brevard, North Carolina. Westbrook Brewing Co. Looking for partners? Slide into the DMs. Uh, I wish I knew where it was from. Probably like not North Carolina now that I've done this setup. Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. We're close to South Carolina too. Yeah. I was born in Mount Pleasant. Really? Yeah. Rubber hot. You're also sour and salty. I was gonna say, is that why you're so pleasant? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's brewed with uh, coriander and sea salt. All right, we're gonna start today with um, act two excerpt from La Rondine. La Rondine, kind of about nothing, just sort of a love story uh, about rich people and artists, um, which is great. We all need that, right? Uh, you watch it on TV all the time. Might as well watch it at the Opera House. So what's happening here, Magda is the main character of uh, La Rondine, and I think. And, um, and she is going going out. So she meets in the first act, she meets this guy named Ruggiero and he's uh, kind of cute. And he asks where he can go to have the best party in town. And so she suggests the place um, that he should go to. And he's like, okay, great, I'll do that. And so then she's like saying, maybe I don't want to go out. I don't want to go out. No, I don't feel like going out. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to dress up like a poor person and go out. And she dresses up like a working class person, even though she's high class courtesan, and heads to this restaurant. And um, at this restaurant, she meets Ruggiero and she's acting like she's somebody else. And Ruggiero does this like falling in love with her thing. And so this is a beautiful, beautiful Puccini melody, uh, you know, kind of laying it on thick. It starts out as a game, but also this is the moment where Magda and Ruggiero actually really do fall in love. This is a really cute recording from, um, it says Naples, 1958, and Rosanna Carteri, great soprano, if you don't know, uh, look her up. And the Ruggiero is Giuseppe Gismondo. Never heard that name in my life. And I chose it even though the quality is like not so good and uh, it's a little bit off syncing wise. It's just really sweet, you'll see. All right, let's go. We're posing a toast. Let's toast to life that gives us love. Oh, come on, come on, YouTube. There's this like little heart figure, also like Kiel Basonio, huh? Magda's Aria from the first time. So he's trying to impress her, right? I'm drinking to your fresh smile. To your deep, searching eyes. Into your mouth. What that mouth do speaks my name. Because oh, you want my heart. It's pretty smooth. This is a quartet. These two people are trying to steal the scene next to them. They also sing high notes. I mean, Puccini's a genius, right? It's so beautiful. Hold on. Also, this guy might be the Viazon before Viazon. Look at his eyebrows. Look at his hair. So this thing's kind of off, but it's great, right? So it's like elevated, right? But also infused with this like real passion under it. It's a pretty cool effect. It's kind of convinced everyone to kind of like ruminate on love, think about love. Imagining what the future can be 
it sounds like the moment when you meet someone and you think that your future is limitless. Like, you know, love songy, like the whole chorus, the whole restaurant is joined in love. Love joined in this thing. It's out of time, out of reality. Also a really beautiful song. High notes. She's so happy. She doesn't want this moment to end. So that's why they transition to that other key. Poets are important, I guess. Just keeps kind of like growing and beautifully. It's a good toast. Vowing eternal love. So exciting. I think those are C's. B flats. B's. I don't know. Everybody does it now. Awesome. Quite the So that's the first, I'm obsessed. What's not to be obsessed with? I mean, you know, these aren't specifically drinking songs. That's not specifically a drinking song, that's a toast, but it counts, come on. How'd that go? That was so good. Cool. I almost cried with what you said. Hmm. When your future seems limitless. That's great. Uh, before you realize it's not. Okay, um, another moment I'm obsessed with drinking an opera. This is another toast from uh, Cosi Fan Tutte from, uh, by Mozart, and it's so beautiful. Cosi Fan Tutte is like a very convoluted plot, right? Like very problematic, very whatever. Like the guys leave, they dress up as Turks and they come back and they switch lovers and the girls don't recognize it the whole time. And it's very, you know, I don't know. You have to do a take on it now to like even get it across to the audience. But this video is um, hilarious. And it's from a recording that was made. Let me get you the information. Oh, Adita Grubarova is um, uh, Fiordaligi and she has this crazy wig on. They all have these crazy wigs on. I don't know what's going on. It's cool. It's a funny, funny video. Harnancor? Coucou? I don't know. Jean-Pierre Ponel? That makes more sense, actually. It looks like Ponel. Anyway, so, um, how do you even explain this, right? Like, everyone's gotten carried away with themselves. They've switched lovers. Um, Ferrando and Dorabella used to be together, and Fiordaligi and uh, Guglielmo used to be together. And now they've switched. Um, Guglielmo is the baritone. He was sure that Fiordaligi was gonna be faithful, but she's not faithful. And so now she kind of is like actually in love with the character that Ferrando is playing. And now Dorabella is sort of really in love with the character that Guglielmo is playing. And so everybody's sort of really into it except for Guglielmo. And so there's this toast, and right before this, um, tocca baby, baby, tocca, tocca baby. Like, let's drink, let's toast, cheers, great. And so this is sort of like, I don't know. It's sort of a stop time moment. Mozart does this so beautifully. Like, um, think about like the trio in Don Giovanni before they go into the party, or, I mean, there's a million examples. Uh, and oh, there's another good drinking song. Finca de no calda la testa. We're not doing that today. Um, and uh, yeah, so time stops, and Fiordaligi says her real emotions, and um, and Ferrando joins in his real emotions or his conflicted emotions, but you know, presented really. Dorabella joins in her real emotions, and then <laughs> Guglielmo's statement or uh, into this is like, screw you guys, what's going on here? I can't, like, so they're all saying, I love, I love you, 
I'm gonna drink to you. That's so great. And William was like, you're all jerks. You know, I left five minutes ago and now you're in love with somebody else. And so she's standing up and saying, uh, we're gonna drown all of our cares in wine and let no memory of the past remain. <laughs> so just like wiping the slate clean of the relationship before. And Guillaume was right there dressed as another person, but like, what? I wish you would drink poison and die. Here we go. My feather's nice. I love lip synced opera movies. See, time stopped. Sounds genuine, right? The come with the frog comes in. Just kidding, it's beautiful. <laughs> he might actually be drunk singing like that. Dolores Ziegler? she crying? She's crying! I've never noticed that before. <laughs> That's amazing. She didn't even pick that. Hand down to Guillermo. Screw it, dude. We can all drink poison and die. These wolves without honor. Mm. Anyway, I have beer in my nose now. All right, um, I don't know the plot to Macbeth that well. No, I'm just kidding. It's just complicated. They're all complicated. So I'm gonna take a shot and have pliable deniability over my mental faculties. Plausible deniability. Pliable, plausible. plausible. deniability. I haven't even had that much of this yet. At some point in this description, I will be handed a shot. I will take the shot. I will continue. Um, it's tequila. Pasote Blanco. Very good. Here we go. So, what's happening in Macbeth right now? I don't know what act we're in. It doesn't matter. Um, they don't either. <laughs> People should be worried about us. Uh -huh. People should be worried about us. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, the king is already dead. Duncan is already dead. Lady Macbeth and uh, has already killed the king and Macbeth is currently the king. And uh, Macbeth went out in the woods and heard this prophecy from the witches that Banquo is supposed to rise to greatness. And so we're on a roll, right? And uh, so why don't we just kill Ban Banquo also? So what's happened right before this banquet where Macbeth is king uh, is that he has had Banquo murdered. And um, Banquo sings this beautiful aria, uh, not important, his son, runs away, very important later on, but not right now. And um, they're at this banquet. So what do we need to know about this? There's already been two murders right at this moment. Um, Macbeth was a little bit leery about the first one. He couldn't really do it, right? So Lady Macbeth had to go back and finish the job. Lady Macbeth is cold hearted and uh, convincing him to do do this stuff. She's also awesome. She's had She has such great music. This is Natrebko and Jelko Lucic from the Mets production. I think it's really cool. I think it's a good production. Um, okay, so what's gonna happen in this is his guilty conscience. He sees the ghost of Banquo and he starts to freak out in the middle of this party. She's already sung one verse of this Brindisi. This is a drinking song, a technical Brindisi. That word, by the way, I didn't do my research on that. That's not an Italian word. That's an uh, bastardization of a German word. Um, 
Yeah, more information about that will come in text because I don't know it right now. You see, the more you read, the more you know. The better you do in school, the better you do in life. That's a promise. Anyway, fun fact. So, um, yeah, yeah, let's do it, I think. Uh, what else do we need to know? So he's, he's, he's going crazy at his own party. She's already sung one verse. The party is, you know, bumping. Um, she's kind of wacky, so it, I mean, you know, she's evil, right? So it has this sort of arched, arch-like... Um... Okay. I don't need that. What? As Lady Macbeth would say, to me, to you, if you were me. Aren't you a man? To me, if you were me. Anyway. Lady Macbeth is about to say, when Macbeth is freaking out, she goes, buck up. Like, you're not a, you're not a man. What's going on? You're, you're giving up our game here at the party. You, you've got to get a hold of yourself. And so um, he's about to see Bunko's ghost. And then we hear the melody again, the second statement of the melody, the second, second verse of the Brindisi. And it's a little bit more desperate this time. But uh, you'll hear it. We'll talk about it. All right, here we go. Joko Lujic. Look at Anna back there worried. Are you crazy? You can't do this here. Taste of the kills. She's like, oh, sit down. Sit down for a minute if you need it. It's okay. Like, sorry guys, uh, let's sing again, let's do the drinking song again, and we shouldn't forget Banquo, uh, he's not with us. He's the only one, who, they're the only two who know that he's dead right now. So kind of like, alright, we're ramping it up again. Lady Macbeth knows she has to take control because he can't handle it. I love that. This chalice is huge. <laughs> That's not so much an invitation to drink as it is like... This is hazing. Presenting a portrait of solidarity. We're strong together. She's making him dance right now. Forcefully. Let us empty our glasses to Banquo. Acting like she didn't know he's dead. The flower of warriors, the pride of Scotland. That's crazy. I'm gonna just back out for a little bit. The ghost of Bongo rises from the back of the party. Ooh. That can't be good. He's freaking out again. I didn't mean to go this far, but we're just gonna keep going, I guess. We'll see if anything happens. There's this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful contratante thing. He has a mad scene. He ends up getting very scared. Everyone's like, why are you talking about witches and ghosts? We're gonna leave. There's burnt tequila. Burn. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. The part of this that I wanted you to see was Nitrepko being like, drink and be a man. Anyway, that's how I, I like to imagine her saying that to me sometimes. Drink and be a man. That's why I dress like this today. Like a man. <clears throat> All right. 
Next one I'm obsessed with is uh, the drinking song from Otello. I'm starting to feel it a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's getting hot in here. How many clips you got left? Uh, two more clips. Um, this beer's almost gone. I've had one shot. I'm a lightweight these days, maybe. She's drunk. I'm not drunk. All right, second beer. This is a uh, sour beer also. I'm into sour beers lately because I'm a sour person. And um, it's called Pink Beds and it's from Acusta, Acusta, Acusta. Acusta Brewing. It's near where we are in Brevard, uh, North Carolina in the Pisca Forest. I like the idea of it. There's this cool bee on it. Maybe we can get a graphic of that. Um, and uh, yeah, Pink Beds is a valley with like a bunch of mountain laurel. Have you ever seen mountain laurel? Beautiful. Um, and wildflowers. And uh, yeah, here we go. Okay. I'm gonna go do this. <sighs> wildflowers don't care where they go. Crow. <laughs> And the field was alive with wildflowers, and I was alive, was, and I was, that's a lyric. And I went with flowers, and I was like, wasn't, what? something wild, even wilder than they, all right. Dolly Parton. Uh, Otello, mm, very clear cut, clear cut part. <sighs> very clear cut. Plot. Here we go. This is towards the beginning of Otello, so it's not too convoluted yet, but it is sort of convoluted. Um, Iago is the instigator of, he's the Lady Macbeth of Otello. Uh, he's the instigator of all the, the um, of all the problems in Otello. So what's happening right now is uh, Iago is jealous of Otello. Rodrigo loves Desdemona, who's married to Otello. Cassio is also friends with Desdemona and Otello. And Iago sees an opportunity in this web to um, screw things up for Otello. So he starts this plan. He tells Rodrigo, if you get Cassio drunk, I can cause some problems and help you out. Help you out on your quest to uh, fall in love with Desdemona. And he knows that um, Cassio and Otello are friends, and so he's gonna ruin that friendship by getting Cassio drunk to make him uh, shirk his knightly soldier duties. Haha, -ha. that was good. Okay, um, here we go. This is Leonucci, <laughs> amazing. Il Leone by Verdi. This is another great Verdi drinking song. Like Otello, did I say Otello's by, or I mean. Come on, guys. Let's get into the wine. Sounds jaunty, right? It's a good tune. Whew, love Nucci. Come on. What's your whistle? Go up and down. Somebody hands a bag to Cassio. Bag of wine. Slap the bag. This is a toast to Bacchus. Drinking to drinking. Doesn't that sound like drinking? It sounds like musical drinking. So pretty forceful, right? But everybody's into it. You can practically feel it. The alcohol seeping into your system. One more sip and he's being drunk. He, uh, Casio has the tolerance of Joseph. I love Nietzsche. Ah. Let's listen to some more, because it's good. Uh, 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 uh. 
Yeah. Ugh. He's pouring wine down his throat right now. Wide fucking open. Oh. Awesome. Great excerpt. Great opera. Great singer. Great wine. <coughs> That's the kind of priceless moment you can't script. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> I'm getting turned. Um, clearly. Uh, we have one more. This is from Lucrezia Borgia. And uh, Lucrezia Borgia is um, <laughs> a very convoluted plot. And uh, what's happening here, Donizetti wrote Lucrezia Borgia, by the way. So, um, uh, how do you even start to talk about this one, right? Lucrezia Borgia, so what has happened right before this? So she, has a son that nobody knows about. But she knows about him and he's, she's obsessed with him. And um, the Duke thinks that she's obsessed with him because she loves him, because the Duke doesn't know that he is her son. Right, is that true? Does anybody know Lucrezia Borgia? Right. I'm pretty sure that's right. And um, so what's happened right before this is the Duke has actually poisoned Gennaro, who is Lucrezia Borgia's son. And um, she comes in with an antidote to the wine. And uh, he drinks it. And she makes him promise to leave and, and get out, you know, be safe somewhere else because the Duke thinks that they're lovers and not mother and son and is obviously trying to kill him and, you know, has obviously thought that he just killed him. Anyway, so this uh, next act begins with um, like all sons, look, my mother would not be proud of me right now. I don't know if she'll watch this one. Um, like all sons, she, uh, he has ignored his mother's advice. And um, instead of leaving and playing dead, he's gone to this party because he doesn't want to leave his friend. His friend's name is um, Orsini. Orsini? Orsini? What's his name? I don't know how to say it. Um... Orsini is a pants roll, so make of that what you will. Uh, Michael Fabiano sang this in a gay space costume, so make of that what you will. Um, not Orsini, it's Gennaro. It's a long story. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just saw a path forward and we can't take that path. Um, all right. So, his friend is singing at the beginning of this party, um, Il segreto per essere felice, the secret to being happy. And if it ain't drinking, I don't know what it is. Here we go. Almost. I don't think we'll make it there, but just so you know, uh, right, this text is sort of ironic because what happens right after this is Lucrezia Borgia comes in and she's like, Haha, -ha, like I poisoned all of you guys' wine that <laughs> they've been like singing about drinking. And she doesn't know that her son is there and ignored her advice. And so he's there and he comes forward and he's like, actually, you killed me too, mom. And they all die. And um, and then she sings this like mad scene about soy figlio mio. Uh, killed at her own hand. Proper plots don't be making sense. All right, uh, this is Anne Howells singing "It's Segreto per essere felici." This I love too. Like what? This has got to be this quality of this video. I mean, it's got to be like late seventies, early eighties. This is the secret to life. Jaunty. It's good to be happy. I know it, not tell everybody. Doesn't matter where the weather it is. It's hot or cold. 
I just joke and drink. And laugh at crazy people. Hmm. the chorus to join in. You're right. Yeah. We should enjoy today. I don't know what's happening now. They don't know what's happening either. <laughs> They're all very confused. <laughs> the pleasures of the profane fade away like smoke. Don't you think we have to fix subtitles in opera, supertitles in opera? That's a video. Comment below. Comment below. If you want me to write every supertitle to every opera from now on, donate to our Patreon page. Someone's playing a joke. So now, she said her philosophy, she's confronted with a weird situation. I'm saying she, but the character is a he. We don't, we don't ascribe to those gender binary pronouns. That could be Anthony Roth Costanza. You don't know. So now she has to practice what she preaches. She's had this weird thing happen. He's had this weird thing happen. They've had this weird thing happen. Uh, this weird thing has happened. And, um, gotta do the second verse. Do some more imitation. When it gets weird, you should just drink more. Laugh at crazy people. I know I do. I think this is the same chalice that Nitrevko had. <laughs> it's so big. Ooh! I like Anne Howells. So the Covent Garden in the 80s, in 1980. You know they were doing more than just drinking in the 80s. She looks great, that's why she's so skinny. That's why he's so skinny looking at him in those tights, those yellow tights, those mustard tights. Just mirrors, I got behind her kind of hot. Take a high note. If she took the high note, she wouldn't have to wait that long for people to clap. Anyway, <laughs> we're done. We're done with this today. There's a lot of drinking in opera. Um, Au vin de Cible la Tristesse. That's from Hamlet. Uh, that's a pretty good one. Qui pèse sur mon coeur. Orlovsky sings. They sing about champagne a lot in, in uh, Deflator Mouse. And. Um, Please throw it on camera. I'm not going to throw it. I'm fine. 
There are four cameras, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, please follow us on YouTube, like and subscribe, uh, comment in the videos, interact with us, um, send me DMs. Um, me personally, not the official channel, not everybody wants to see that. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. Uh, it would be so, so nice of you if you want to buy me a drink, you can do that by committing a certain amount of money per month on Patreon, but it's like $5, so that's like half of a beer. You could buy me half of a beer every month, and we can continue to bring you this excellent content. <clears throat> Offer gets cooler when you drink more. Uh, the drinks in the Metropolitan Opera are too expensive. Peter Gelb, take those prices down. I think that's it. We'd love your support. No, seriously, we'd love your support. <clears throat> we would love your support.